Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'll call to order the regularly scheduled board meeting for the Village of Lothian, Wednesday, July 12th, 2020, bless you. 2023 at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Deputy Clerk Harris. Trustee Burbett. Here. Trustee Caveney. Here. Trustee Crowley. Here. Trustee Hilly. Here. Trustee Johnson. Here. Trustee Killily. Mayor LaRue. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence for our fallen veterans. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. At this time, we are very pleased to swear in three new police officers. Um, full-time probationary police officers. All right, uh, so at this time, uh, Alessandra, you would like to come forward all the way up here? Get front and center. Deputy Clerk Harris will swear you in. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I Alexandra Sanchez. Having been appointed. Having been appointed to the position. To the position of full-time probationary police officer. A full-time probationary police officer in the village of Midlothian. In the village of Midlothian. In the Cook County. In excuse the, me. The yeah, County of Cook. In the County of Cook. A forward said, "Do solemnly swear." A forward said, "Do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and ordinance of the Village of Midlothian, and ordinance of the Village of Midlothian, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of the position of probationary full-time police officer, of probationary full-time police officer, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability." Congratulations. Yes, I know. Yes. Do you have someone that would like to put the badge on there? Mm -hmm. Um, my mom. Mom? Congratulations. Yeah. Welcome. Yes, Tiffany Rabinsky, is that right? Raise your right hand, repeat after me. I state your name. I said your Having been appointed to the position to the position of full-time probationary police officer in the village of Midlothian in the village of Midlothian in the county of Cook in the county of Cook aforesaid do solemnly swear I personally do solemnly swear that I will support that I will support the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the State of Illinois the Constitution of the State of Illinois and the ordinances of the village of Midlothian and the ordinances of the village of Midlothian and that I will faithfully discharge the duties and I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of the position of probationary full-time police officer probationary full-time police officer according to the best of my abilities according to the best of my abilities congratulations thank you
Ahmad Abdelkader. Having been appointed to the position, to the position a full-time probationary police officer, a full-time probationary police officer in the village of Midlothian, in the village of Midlothian, in the county of Cook, in the county of Cook, aforesaid do solemnly swear, aforesaid do, do solemnly swear that I will support, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and ordinances of the village of Midlothian, and the and the ordinances of the village of Midlothian. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of the position of the position of probationary full-time police officer of probationary full-time police officer according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations. Thank you. Three of you, we're very happy to have you on board with the Village of Milothian. Look for, uh, look to see some good things out of all three of you. So welcome aboard. If uh, you were only here for those three swearing ins, now would be a good time to take off. But you can certainly stay if you'd like. Just here for the swearing in, Henry? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, good to see you. At this time, I will open the floor to public comment. Is there any public comment tonight? Jean. Yes, I, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, Sunday is the uh, garden walk from 10 to 4. Tickets on sale over at the Village Green. Um, they're $10. We have 16 beautiful gardens in the village, and it's pretty much the first time we've had that many in the garden walk. So, um, you know, it's a rain or shine event and it's one of our fundraisers. So come on out and view the, you know, support our little committee and come and view the gardens. Um, another note, I've gotten some very generous donations in from residents and business owners. So we're going to be able to replenish the poor flower boxes that had the flowers um, removed. And it still saddens me that someone would do that. And um, that's, that's it. I just want to uh, publicly thank um, Trustee Burbeck and um, uh, Superintendent Sperry for taking care of my issue with the signs on Lar um, yeah, the back of Laramie. So that was done immediately. And um, again, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everybody that was involved in that, taking care of that. So I appreciate it. Is it working? Yeah, um, it is, but I think there's some that have been doing it for so long. You know, but I think it, 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 it's going to just be a matter of getting used to that, you know. Okay. Yeah, but it, thank you. Thanks again. Sure. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. 
Jose Fuentes. Jose. Um, you know, uh, Midlothian has some great trees out there. Everybody knows um, that I care about our trees. Um, a lot of them are maples. Uh, a few are very special uh, red maples. Um, I don't know how many. But um, everybody should be familiar with how um, they get plagued with the black spots on their leaves. And especially when, in the fall when they start to drop and land on the ground, these beautiful orange to golden yellow leaves on the ground with the black spots. Okay. And so I became, started, you know, to investigate what causes them. And, um, you know, and they plague my tree. I took off um, some leaves off of mine um, just a week ago um, because of these insects that I discovered on them. Now there's ladybugs, everybody knows ladybugs, but I don't think ladybugs cause the black spots, and, and there's no research saying that. But uh, uh, this article that I submitted um, uh, for evidence, and then these, I'm hoping that the arborists can investigate. This is a similar insect in here, and the sap, I believe that they might be feeding on the sap that discharges off the tree and everything. And these insects feed, and they land everywhere, and then they poop everywhere, and the black spots might be something related to, you know, they're just pooping and then, you know, destroying the leaves, essentially. So um, I, I wish that they, you know, there's a systemic uh, chemical for uh, insect killing that should be sprayed on the entire tree, top to bottom. Um, but I don't have the elevation of, of ability to do that you know, from my roof or anything like that. So, uh, you know, using village equipment or something like that where they could spray a systemic bug insect killer that would just, you know, attack these insects. I'm submitting these for the arborist um, to investigate. Um, on another uh, issue, fireworks, okay? I understand fireworks. I celebrate our Independence Day too, but M, I mean, these <laughs> mortar bombs that are allowed to be sold, let alone being shot off, mortar bombs. I mean, these things sound like hand grenades. Children everywhere, our pets, you know, scared to death every time, uh, you know, these explosions. It's, and, okay, so the, you know, we call the village police and, there's nothing they can do, you know, and stuff. Well, if you just parade around with the lights on, would get the people in the house and off of the street where they're doing these, you know. The village, I thought, you know, every village is, has their, their firework demonstrations, the independence celebration. But people doing it, you know, I'm out here in my shorts, you know, in no t-shirt, walking out, setting off a grenade, and running off in the house. You know, I challenged a guy and, you know, and he threatened me. So, this isn't, this isn't right. This isn't the way we celebrate our independence. That night, uh, probably two nights, and I'm, I know citations were written. Um, <clears throat> you make a good point. Yes, there are professional fireworks displays done in the area, but uh, as fire chief can attend to, it is highly regulated and highly inspected. Um, so doing it yourself, I made the, the announcement prior to the 4th of July that they are legal and they should not be done, and if you get caught, you will be cited in possible yeah. instances. Well, we made the call, and you know we would have appreciated uh, police drive by with the lights on to message to the individuals, you know, I mean, they have our address, you know, we gave it to them, you know, so I thank you all for your help. Who, um, can I, should I just leave this here? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? 
Okay. Then I will close the floor to public comment and move on to tonight's consent agenda. Number one, approve to execute an engagement letter from Andrew S. Payne of Tressler LLP for the new public works building project. Number two, approval of the May 2023 administration department monthly report. Number three, approval of the May 2023 building department monthly report. Number four, approval of the May 2023 fire department monthly report. Number five, approval of the May 2023 police department monthly report. Number six, approval of the May 2023 public works department monthly report. Number seven, approval of the May 2023 treasurer's monthly report. Number eight, approval of the June 21st, 2023 committee meeting minutes. Number nine, approval of the June 28th, 2023 board meeting minutes. And number 10, approval of the list of bills. Is there any item any trustee would like off of tonight's consent agenda? Hearing no dissension, I'm looking for a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda as read. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Deputy Clerk Harris. Trustee Caveney? Aye. Trustee Hilly? Aye. Trustee Burbett? Aye. Trustee Crowley? Aye. Trustee Johnson? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to trustee business, Trustee Jackson. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a couple things more uh, community-based. Um, the events committee met yesterday. We will be having our committee uh, community picnic on Sunday, August 13th from 1 to 5 on the Village Green. So please join us. Bring a chair and a blanket and some food to join us for a nice afternoon. We will be selling a limited number of hot dogs and hamburgers um, for purchase. We'll have a jump house, some music, a porta potty. We're also going to have some old-fashioned games such as egg toss, uh, water balloons, three-legged races. We will have trophies for both kids and adult division. So you know, bring your kids if they want to get involved. Um, a resident reached out to me um, a, over a week ago, but I will wait till tonight. Um, they reminded me of the history of the village creating a list of kids that want to do uh, want to do work for seniors, such as cutting grass or shoveling snow, among other things. She would like the village to reinstitute this list and she would like to see it um, advertised. So I, I obviously I wasn't here. I don't know if anybody has any recollection of the village having a list of young young people that want to do community service. Um, she mentioned that this would be a good way for them to have community service hours. I'm not sure how we would go about that and would it be our responsibility to maintain that list or does somebody come up to the village and get it? So just I'm opening it up for thoughts. What do you guys think? We we did have that quite a while ago, I mean, many years ago. Unfortunately, the litigious society got involved in okay. the yeah. liability. We Waiver of liability would be a big issue for me, too. We had to pr uh, provide man, you know, uh, staff to follow them around. And now you have to provide uh, bathroom facilities. If they're further, if you're far away from a bathroom facility, you have to have to, you have to price on the con site. It just became, I mean, I love the idea. Mm -hmm. And I think we've been working with Bremen. Uh, hasn't that something with the, yes. uh, the service committee? Yes. So if, if the village maintained this list and tried to pair teenagers with seniors to do work, we would have to provide them with the bathroom facility? The, the thinking also is there's a liability Ability. issue for the village too. Wow. In other words, because they got the list from us, they could sue the village if something went wrong. Wow. Okay. I know it's sad. Mm -hmm. We had that conversation like about four years ago when we were reinstituting some of the senior programs and that was one of the reasons that we didn't move forward with that with the, uh, uh -huh. with the service committee. I'd, I'd love mm -hmm. the idea. Is there, I mean, I don't know how we could, is there workarounds? Maybe the scouts, somebody who would be responsible. It's a thought. Yeah. Or a school. Sometimes schools have those type of okay. programs too. So I'll reach back out to the resident and kind of yeah. share our discussion and maybe she she can contact Bremen to say if if somebody needs somebody, mm -hmm. you know, somebody to shovel snow, can they reach out to somebody at Bremen for that? Right, because I, what I see a lot is people getting kids up from Facebook or something mm -hmm. and that's right. not really the best option, especially for a senior. Sure. You know, it would be nice to go through a sure. school that vetted and. Wouldn't okay. that just shift liability to the school? But they might but have they, the ability to do that because they already provide liability issue waivers for school sports and things like that. I'm just thinking out loud here. What about nice waivers way. as far as the village goes? There'd have to be a waiver too. Yeah. If, if anybody was working for, um, through the village, they'd have to sign a waiver. 
but those aren't always enforced. It's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. I just wanted to hear it. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can blame the lawyer today. <laughs> no. hey, thanks for providing yeah. that historical perspective. I wasn't sure how we could do it. It is a great idea. Um, and finally, the Park District will have their back to school night on Thursday, August 10th. Um, the t Park District is looking for donations for the events from businesses and residents. If residents are interested in providing school supplies, they can drop them off at the Park District building for the event. Um, they're expecting about 400 kids slash families. So if anyone can donate to this upcoming school year, uh, I know the Park District would be grateful. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Trustee Burbett. I have nothing tonight, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Trustee Hilly. I have nothing tonight, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome back, Trustee Caveney. Thank you, Mayor. I knew you were back in town because my inbox grew <laughs> exponentially. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but welcome back. I just wanted to update the board and the residents on uh, two vacant properties here in town. Uh, the first is the vacant parcel up at 4339, 4351, 147th Street, which is in between Kildare and Costner on the south side of the street. That property has been posted for abandonment, and the village's abandonment application is moving forward. Um, and as soon as I know when the initial court date is, I will let everybody know. Uh, the other property at 3304, 147th Street, which is towards the east side of town that is uh, used to be I think one stop auto uh, we did apply for abandonment but discovered that there was a um, a tax sale so the tax deed prove up hearing was held on June 22nd the tax buyers working to pay the subsequent taxes and delinquent taxes and once they do that they'll submit their order for tax deed to the court for the judge to review and sign um, so it looks like there's going to be a tax buyer for that property however at this time we don't have a time frame our attorney advised that there's no required time frame for this tax buyer to pay the taxes and move forward but their attorney indicated that they wanted to move forward and get it done so fingers crossed it'll happen in the next couple of months so as I know more about that property, I'll let you know. So at this time, the village will not be moving forward with abandonment for the 3304 147th Street because there will be a, there's a tax buyer involved. And that's all I have right now. 15207. 15207 Lawndale. Lawndale. Our next hearing on that should be, I think, July 20, 20th or 22nd. And the judge will be issuing the judicial deed at that time. Okay. So. And as soon as the judge does that, the village will be putting that property up for sale ASAP, selling it as is. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Uh, and welcome back, Trustee Crowley. Oh, thank ditto, you, sir. Ditto, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Anything tonight, ma'am? Oh, sorry, yes, I didn't realize it was my turn. <laughs> uh, I was waiting for Trustee Kelly, who's not here. Uh, <laughs> um, just a, a couple things this evening. First on my uh, agenda, I have, um, uh, discussion of de-escalation equipment for the police department um, I did send the board some additional uh, quotes and documents um, regarding what type of equipment we're going to be bought we need to buy and the total amount for this is not to exceed $28,700 to be paid out of seized funds not out of the village's general account and I just wanted to see if anybody had any um, questions about that normally I would have waited till next week but we have some um, deadlines with the quotes that we want to get in before we have to requote it so I'm discussing it this week and I will be asking for it to be put on the, my agenda for approval for next all right say questions okay um, next I just wanted just a, a few announcements I'm you know I wasn't here last week but um, I do want to thank everybody who came out and participated in the village parade um, I think I say this every year but it was definitely one of our largest parades um, the it was weather, awesome parade. the weather held out. We had, um, a, you know, it, it was a great experience. I just received the pictures when I got back today, so I'll be getting those um, to Jackie to put on the village website. Um, but it was a great day. Thank you to everybody who volunteered. Some of our volunteers are here right now. Um, everybody who participated, everybody who came out, all of our floats, all of our cars. It's, it's, it just keeps getting better. So, can't wait till next year. But thank you again to everybody who came out. Um, August 1st, we will have our National Night Out. Um, 
as anybody who's driven down 147th Street knows, there's a big hole in the Village Greens. I'm not cautiously, I'm cautiously optimistic that it'll be fine, but I'm not optimistic that it will not be a hole anymore. So we have um, had our Public Works reach out to the contractor um, and ask them to please make sure that they have secured whatever construction they are still doing. So our footprint will be a little bit smaller this year, but anybody who's come out to National Night Out knows it'll still be an amazing event and we will have tons of things for kids and families to do. And of course we will have our, all of our departments there representing and especially our police department will be there interacting and, and having conversations. We have a record number of vendors that have wanted to come out to have tables to provide information this year. So um, please bear with us with the, the dust, but it really still is the best place to have it with the type of electric and things like that that we need. So again, August 1st. And as a reminder, August 19th is the Community Policing and Safety Committee's um, fundraiser for thun the Thunderbolt game. Um, those tickets are on sale now and there is a website and QR code on the Village website and also on multiple Facebook pages. Finally, we um, will be having our first Traffic Safety Committee event, uh, meeting on Tuesday the 25th. I think it's Tuesday the 25th here in Village Hall. That'll be our kickoff meeting and we'll be bringing to the board um, the pl our plans and how we're gonna move forward with creating a traffic safety plan. That is all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Two things. Uh, next year for the parade, can we not have a police officer lead the parade? Because it was quite the brisk uh, walk. <laughs> well, sir, well, you know, I, I <coughs> It, I, I can honestly say that that was done for everyone's safety to make sure that we didn't have cars trying to come out and things like that. So we will ask them to slow it down a little bit. But, you know, at least you got your steps in. I got my steps in. That's all I can say. It was a beautiful day. Thank, thank you, everyone involved. It was just a great, great parade. Kathy and I didn't get steps in. We got a ride. Uh, yeah, we saw. It was a little warm, but it was an awesome And you had to turn the heat on? on yeah, the night or something we did. Yeah. Yeah. We had to turn the heat on. That was a cool uh, car. You want to... Any updates on the police, uh, police station? Anything well, you want to say? I, I mean, I, the only thing that I can say, and I think most people know this, we've said this a couple of times, it, we're 95% there with the police department. The only thing we're waiting on is um, our um, Illinois law requires us to have a certain type of generator installed so that we can you know, run certain systems, especially in our lockup and things like that, in case the power goes out. Unfortunately, that um, equipment was ordered about 23 months ago and it was due in May so we are still waiting once that goes you know once that the the generator gets installed and we're able to hook up the rest of the electric and do all that we will be having our grand opening everybody is biting at the chomps I know mm -hmm. so I'm first one in line there so uh, as soon as as soon as we get updates we'll let everybody know perfect thank you ma'am uh, moving on to department heads, Chief Hot Wagner. Yeah, Mayor, just a couple things. Um, we do have a couple firefighters fall off an injury. We're hoping to get one of them back within two weeks, and the other one in mid-August. Uh, with that being said, we did start a process of testing for candidates. We have four candidates. We're processing right now with polygraphs and testing and all that. Hopefully, we'll have some answers by the end of the month, early August, for appointments. That's all. Thanks, sir. Deputy Chief Tavamina. I just wanted to wish everybody to have a continued safe summer. Thanks, as always, for all the support from the community and the village, and um, I hope to see you at the night out. Thank you. Just two quick items uh, tonight, Mayor. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals met last night. Uh, there were two cases, both for special use permits, one for daycare to be located at Karlov and 147th and the other one for the Bellamia Fine Dining Restaurant to have uh, the outdoor area used as a, officially as an outdoor cafe. Both of those uh, are moving forward with a positive recommendation from the ZBA, and they should be coming in front of uh, the Village Board soon. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Nothing tonight, Mayor. <laughs> well, no report tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Everyone's going to be dusting after the Attorney meeting. Murphy? 
I have no report this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't really have anything either, but I told Trustee Caveney I would give a report on my meeting with Assessor Kagey. Uh, it, was, it was a fairly good meeting, a uh, little over an hour, hour and a half. Uh, he gave me uh, an attachment here that I'm going to share with the board of all of the items that the Assessor's Office is working on to assist municipalities uh, in getting all the taxes that uh, they are, should get. Uh, the one thing that I did share with Trustee, K Trustee Caveney was we all know that vacant properties are assessed at a much lower value because they're vacant. And some property owners that <coughs> own vacant property take advantage of that and leave it vacant for decades. Are you talking about a property with a vacant building or just a vacant lot or both? Either. Okay. Anything, any vacant, anything that's being claimed as vacant, mm -hmm. uh, they will no longer be able, allowed to claim that as vacant in perpetuity. They will continue to get assessed at a higher rate uh, each assessment. So they're working on that. There's, there's a lot of things here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll share this with, if you could uh, scan that and email to the board, that'd be perfect. A lot of good things. I know you did attend um, the seminar. Um, uh, Assessor Kagey admitted that it, it's definitely possible that Bremen Township's assessments will go up, but he doesn't believe that is a direct correlation to your actual property tax going up because they take into consideration the total EAB of the town to make that number up. Mm -hmm. so. We're going to find out soon. Yes, we will. The so, problem that uh, we're having now is that we've got a lot of commercial property in town that's that is struggling that are struggling because the property taxes are so high. And I know of two commercial properties in town that were for sale, and there were they had interested parties, but then the transactions never came to fruition because the property taxes were way too high. So I don't know how that's going to get addressed. I don't either. Give me the information and we can work on it. Okay. Uh, the only other thing is uh, I've been asked, and I'm proudly reporting this, uh, Orland Park will be hosting the, uh, sorry, I don't know what VAW stands for. It's the Fallen Heroes Memorial Flag. They will be displaying it uh, August 4th through August 6th, 2023 at their Taste of Orland Park, which is on Ravinia Avenue in Orland Park. Uh, the VA, VAU Memorial American Flag, 27 foot by seven foot, is made from over 7,000 dog tags with the names of the men and women who wow. were killed in action since 9-11, global war on terror. The flag also has 50 gold stars honoring families for the loss and the state of Illinois has lost 260 military personnel during this period. So uh, I'll, I'll make mention of this uh, at every board meeting for the next month. So August 4th through August 6th at their Taste of Orland Park. I thought that was uh, important. That is all I have tonight. Uh, Deputy Clerk Harris. I almost I said clacky. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing there. Thank you, ma'am. So there's no further business coming for the board. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. A second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you all.